Refrigeration has been a huge boon to the global economy. Refrigerated cargo containers are the cornerstone of globalization. Refrigerators are a boon to health and nutrition everywhere. And air conditioning ain't too bad either. If they had pivoted, these once great ice companies could have brought all of this to the world and profited from all of it. But instead, they're a punchline in my talk. That's cold. <laughs> a lot more where that came from. <laughs> Stay with me. So why didn't the ice barons embrace the ice machine? For that matter, why do we fly United instead of Union Pacific? Why aren't my, why aren't my Instagram filters branded by Kodak? It's not because companies like these, heads of their industries, were too big. Failure to innovate is not a function of size. It's a function of vision, of who you are, of how you're structured, and how far you're willing to go. So here's how it works. The innovation pivot is a three-step dance. First, you have to understand what it is you actually do. Then you have to structure yourself for change and innovation. And finally, you have to commit to the change. You have to take risk. Let's go through these one at a time, starting with the first. Understanding what it is that you actually do. You know, this sounds simple, but I think it's, I think it's actually the toughest one. I want to give another example from New England. You know, the first oil companies in America didn't come from Texas and California. They came from places like Nantucket and New Bedford. And they were whale oil companies. They hunted whales and mined oil out of their heads. It's a bit gruesome if you ask me, but I'm told it was quite good oil, burned clean and bright. And the whale game was real money. So why aren't there any whale barons today? Well, the whale oil companies missed a key lesson, and it was this. They didn't sell whale oil. They sold heat and light. And so when some entrepreneurs started digging petroleum out of the ground and refining it into cheaper kerosene, you know, these uh, masters of whaledom fought it in the press as dark and dirty rather than embracing innovation. Within a decade, they'd be out of business. You know, Kodak actually invented the world's first digital camera in the 1970s. They invented it. If they had pressed on that innovation, they would have been decades ahead of their competitors. But they passed on it. They didn't think people would want to look at photos on screens. And besides, they were making a ton of money selling film. But film wasn't really their product. They sold memories. And within a couple of decades, they'd be out of business because they passed on the opportunity to shape the future. Companies often miss their moment, not just because they're stuck in the present time. They're stuck in something even more fundamental than that, which is an inflexible conception of what it is that they do. We all know the standard barriers to innovation, legal, social, technological. But the biggest barrier is ideological, and it has to do with identity. Look, I don't want to get all Burning Man on you guys here, but what you do for the world isn't necessarily the same as what you sell. What you do is more fundamental than that. It's defined by the value you create for people in the world. You know, it's not the item people are buying, it's why they're buying it. It's not what people are paying you for. It's the reason that they're paying you in the first place. That's what the ice barons didn't get, or the whalers, the railroaders, the people who sold film. They let changes in technology pass them by because they were stuck in rigid ways of self-identification. They became their product, not their service. They were what they did, they were what they sold, not what they did. They identified with their past and their present at the expense of their future. Now, I've talked a lot about other companies, but even Facebook faced this challenge. When I joined in 2006, we were a college-only social network. And there was a huge debate inside the company about whether or not we should open up. Now, this may sound crazy, given how things have turned out, but a lot of very smart people believed it would kill the company to open up beyond colleges. So how do we decide to do it? Well. 
we realize something very important. Our product is connection. So if we pass up on any opportunity to connect people, we're just letting our customers down today and giving fuel to our competitors to beat us with tomorrow. And look, I'm probably being a little too hard on the railroaders and the whalers, and I'm definitely being too hard on Kodak. Retrospect is an incredibly privileged position from which to judge. I get that. It's never easy to see the future coming. I think this current election season is proof enough of that. So in the absence of having a fortune teller, it only makes sense that companies would continue to invest in those things that are making them money today. So Kodak gets a pass. It would have been impossible to predict smartphones sitting way back in 1970. But for those of us here in 2016, we have no such excuse. Mobile is a piece of the future that we can all see coming. Half the presentations here have been about mobile. None of you can look back in a couple years and say, boy, those smartphones, you know, who knew? They're a big deal, they're coming. So all we can do is work to take advantage of them. So don't be bound by your identity today. See opportunity in change, glory in crisis. And if you do, you won't get frozen out.